What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of All the Mods to the Sky. Guys, I've been doing some reading on the bees, and I have discovered something all by myself. Totally did not hear from you guys in the comments at all that the gene indexer, the gene indexer that I said doesn't automatically combine, needs a redstone signal to automatically combine. I know. Amazing. I read it all by myself. Totally not from the comments. <laughs> uh, so if we come in here and we place a redstone signal and we start placing these genes in here, check it out. They're automatically combining. Mm hmm. Yep. So yeah, the, uh, the quest book didn't mention the redstone signal and I didn't bother to actually look up how this thing works. I just assumed since it said it would automatically combine, it would automatically combine, but no, it needs a redstone signal to automatically combine. So we got that sorted now. So that's pretty cool. Uh, last episode, we were looking at different ways to get Osmia, or I'm sorry, different methods to turn elements into Iridium. And we were looking at Osmium and Hydrogen as one of those methods to do this. So I made ourselves the, what is this book called? Alchemistry Labs Catalog Book. And yeah, I was gonna go through here and make all the different blocks and recipes for all these things. In fact, I made one of them here, reactor casing. Uh, and then it said that we needed reactor glass. We go back to the fusion multi-block. Yeah, so 36 reactor glass, 62 reactor casing. So I went to go make reactor glass recipe. Reactor glass. And in order to make this, you have to do it in a combiner and you have to have lead oxide plus silicon dioxide. What the heck? How do you get lead oxide? So in order to make lead oxide, you need to have oxygen and lead in a combiner. Well, how do you get lead? In order to get lead, you have to have lead carbonate. How do you get lead carbonate? You need lead and carbonate, obviously. Well, how do you get the lead again? Well, in order to get lead, you have to have lead carbonate. <laughs> <laughs> this is where I was scratching my head for a moment that I noticed that it says one out of 19 recipes in the dissolver. Uh, so you can scroll over here. You can put lead dust to get 16 of the lead. You can put a lead ingot to get 16 of those. And there's a few other methods to, to get lead. You can, looks like you can, uh, put records in here to get some different things as well. But yeah, obviously what we want, since we only want lead, is lead ingots or lead dust to turn it into this. So that's the method that we are going to use here. Uh, so we need to make ourselves a dissolver. Dissolver. This guy. Oh. Control. Ah. Yeah, this book is using, I think this is the same thing that was used in Batania. I think. Anyway, let's get back in here. Um... So to make a dissolver, we need some magma blocks, redstone dust, pistons. This is all pretty easy. Let's just go ahead and craft this now. Uh, can we do it? We are missing some things. We don't have, we don't have these magma blocks. That requires four magma creams. We have one magma cream. Can I craft more? It looks like I can. So I need seven of those, I do believe. I said I already had one in here. What the heck, game? There it is. Okay. I don't know why the other one didn't just pop in there, but it didn't. Uh, so now we have those and here's this dissolver. Very good. So how does this work? It looks like we need power. Got a pause button. So you put a thing in there, you give it power. Let's just test it out. Lead. Uh, we'll put a one lead ingot in here and we'll give it some power. Do I have power in this thing? I do. Boop. That's pretty quick. And there's 16 lead. All right, sweet. So that's not bad at all. So we could set up an automation for this. I assume we can just put an interface on there and tell Applied Energistics how to do this sort of stuff. Yeah, so we'll have to do that. Uh, so now that we have the lead, we needed, uh, what are we making? The reactor glass? Reactor glass. All right, so we have lead, but in order to make lead oxide, we need oxygen in there as well. So in the atomizer, we need oxygen gas and that will make this a uh, dissolver. Looks like we can do 74 different recipes to make that. I'm not sure I want to do all that. Vision controller. We got a few methods in the fusion controller. There's a few methods. So I'm going to see if we can use mechanism oxygen in order to get this. Hopefully we can. And then that will make this a lot simpler. 
Uh, but be, I guess before we do that, let's take a look at the atomizer. The atomizer itself, it says requires 50 FE per tick. That's, that's not bad at all. And then, yeah, it's pretty simple recipes, some iron for the cauldrons, and basically the same thing as the dissolver. Okay, so we'll go ahead and make that. We'll sleep till day. We'll be right back. Right, so I went ahead and I made the atomizer, and then I made an electrolytic separator, and this is connected to our sink that we had over here. So we're pumping in water. The electrolytic separator is converting the water into hydrogen and oxygen. We'll go ahead and dump the excess hydrogen, so this thing will just fill up until the oxygen is full, since we're getting, it looks like, twice as much hydrogen than oxygen. Uh, so yeah, we need to put oxygen over into this thing. This is zero of 16 millibuckets. I don't know if we can put the gas in or if we have to take the oxygen and then convert that into a liquid oxygen using a deconcentrator. We'll have to figure that out. Uh, so first things first, we need to get ourselves, I guess, uh... What are those things called? I can never remember these pipes from Mechanism. Uh, let's just search for basic. We need a pressurized tube. This is how you move gases around. I assume... I assume we will be able to do that. Pressurized tube. And not craft that? There we go. Alright, pressurized tube. So that is the oxygen side. Yeah, looks like that's the oxygen side. I don't think I'm gonna have enough. We'll have to move this machine. <laughs> Okay, so we'll move this over here. Let's see if we actually... Oh, that does not connect. I guess I could have tried attaching the pipe directly to this. Okay, so that doesn't work. So we will need to make ourselves the deconcentrator. So we have oxygen in here. The oxygen is filling up. And we want this. I think this is set up in the right thing. So it's going to convert the oxygen into liquid oxygen over here. Uh, this needs power as well. So let me grab... Oh, I have some pipes on me. We'll grab these. Oh, I have to set that to extract power into the pipe, right? There we go. We got power. We're making liquid oxygen. So now I just need a pipe from here to here. So I just need a fluid pipe or I can just use this, I guess. And is that working? We have liquid oxygen in here. We don't have power. So again, I'm going to have to... Uh... Okay. So we have power coming in. We have liquid oxygen. I don't know if that needs a full 1,000 millibuckets or if this liquid oxygen even works. Well, with over four buckets worth of liquid oxygen in here, I would say that it's not going to work. All right. Well, I started experimenting around with the automatizer here. Um, yeah, this is the one we were trying to pump the liquid oxygen in and try and get oxygen out of. Unfortunately, you can't do that, but you can just put water in there. And when you put water in there, you get water, the chemlib version of water. So with this chemlib version of water, we can put this into the dissolver here, and we can split that into hydrogen and oxygen. There we go. Okay, so the oxygen, that's what we needed to make the reactor glass that we're trying to, to make here. So we needed lead oxide, and in order to make lead oxide, we need to combine oxygen plus lead to get this lead oxide stuff. So lead oxide, that's how we do that. Silicon dioxide, however, this is something I don't know yet. So we're going to need silicon, and we know how to get the oxygen. So silicon is obtained. I assume we can just throw uh, silicon in here, or are we just going to have to do it like some other weird way? Huh. I would have expected that we could have thrown the applied energistic silicon in here to get that. Uh, so it looks like an ender pearl will give us... I assume the ender pearl is giving us all this stuff. Let's try one. Ender pearl. We throw one into here. Yep. Okay. So there we go. There's how we're going to get our silicon. And we're also getting neodymium and mercury. I don't know if those are useful for anything. Uh, but I can see that we're going to have a lot of these chemicals in our inventory in the future. So let's go ahead and take all this stuff. And then we want to go to a combiner, which I don't... Have we made a combiner yet? I don't think we made the combiner. So we want a chemical combiner thingy. Yeah, this guy. Yeah, we have not made this one. So we will do that, this, and one of those. All right, so combiner. We'll just sit down here to see how this works. All right, so we are going to need to power this, obviously. So we'll do one of those and a one of those. 
So the combiner, we are getting power, so we want to combine, I guess, lead and oxygen, first of all. So there's our lead oxide, so I guess we probably want to just go ahead and do a bunch of those. Okay, so we're making a bunch of lead oxide here. I should grab another bucket of water, throw that into here, get some more of this water, and then convert that into hydrogen and oxygen, since we will need more oxygen. All right, so we got that going. Yeah, we're making plenty of this lead oxide. This is definitely something I feel like we're going to automate. I don't know how how easily this is going to be automatable. And it doesn't look like these machines are upgradable in any meaningful way. There's like no speed upgrades or anything. So these are going to be the speed that we're going to. Uh, there's a lot of recipes for things in here. Can I create eggs? Or, oh. Yeah, required input item. Okay, so that does make an egg. Interesting. So we can create uh, a few different things. Melon seeds. Okay. Uh, slime block. We can do that with protein and sucrose. Sponge. Calcium carbonate and kaolinite. All right. Yeah, interesting. So there's a few things to mess around with here. All right, guys. So here we are underneath our old monster platform in fact i don't think i mentioned that but i did take down our mob farm yeah so we no longer have a mob farm back here we still have the uh the drawers where the mob drops were but yeah we don't have a mob farm anymore i noticed that we haven't been using it at all for like i don't know how many episodes and it's been kind of a an eyesore for a while so i went ahead and i got rid of it before the episode started but anyway we're down below that platform now and i have set up a thing here so we have a new sink that's just providing an, an automatizer, an atomizer, atomizer with uh, water. The water uh, turning into the chemlib stuff, and that's being distributed into three different dissolvers over here, right? And we're just constantly making oxygen and hydrogen, and that is being retrieved through some import buses into our applied energistic system. And then I set up some drawers over here, and we are keeping the hydrogen in this one and the oxygen in this one. So we don't fill up our applied energistic system, right? So that's what I have done so far. Uh, what I think that we want to do now that we have the oxygen, we want to set up a dissolver so we can take lead ingots and turn it into the, the chemlib lead. And then we also want to be able to make ourselves silicon dioxide. Now I was trying to figure out how we're going to make that for making the reactor glass again we come into here we see it's a lead oxide we know how to make that now silicon dioxide required silicon so i went down the rabbit hole of looking at how we're going to be able to make that silicon to combine it we saw the ender pearl thing before uh we don't have unlimited of those and nether bricks and the whole bunch of different things in here which we don't really have unlimited of but then i noticed if we actually go back to um the silicon dioxide if we look at the recipe for silicon dioxide there's there's a dissolver recipe here as well and i was like okay so this seems more more like something that we could do stone bricks into this stuff uh but this is a relative recipe and that means relative uh will not always get 16 percent of the silicon dioxide like everything always adds up to a hundred i i don't know i was reading that in the book and like like the relative recipes aren't really what you want. You want something that's more absolute because that means that you're guaranteed that 50% of the time you get that 50% of the time you get two of them, right? So yeah, that's what we want. So concrete kind of seemed interesting where you can get four water and two silicon dioxide out of it. But then I kept scrolling here and I saw that glass. If you put glass into the dissolver, you get four silicon dioxide. That's what we want. <laughs> So that is what we are going to do. So in order to do such things, I started preparing. I think we're going to set up a interface. The interface is going to go into a chest. That chest is going to extract into some dissolvers down here. I have eight of these in total. We are probably going to move this. I was just putting this down as an example. But anyway, this interface will dump all the recipes in this chest. We'll use pipes to connect these guys here to distribute. We will use a uh, round robin approach 
and hopefully we'll be able to do this eight times faster than just one of these at a time. I don't know if there's a way we can limit the amount that each of these gets. So we're not putting like, if we're doing a stack in half, this one gets a full stack and this one gets half a stack and the rest of these are unused. I don't know if there's a way that we can do that in this method. I will try and figure that out, but yeah, that's what I want to go with here. And we have it all set up now. And uh, yeah, I made the mistake of using an interface because it's always been an interface in Applied Energistics 2 up until this mod pack. It's a pattern provider we need. So the pattern provider is set for one glass equals four silicon dioxide, right? That's the pattern that we're using. That gets dumped into here. And yeah, it gets distributed into all of these like we were talking about. And the round robin, it does seem like it does not dump the end, like a one full stack into this one and then partial stack into this one and everything else is empty. It seems like it distributes this uh, very evenly. So let's take a look at this. If I do silicon dioxide, you see I've already done a little bit here, but let's say we want to craft up like 300 of those. So that's 128 sand to 128 glass. So we are crafting that all up. If we look in here, we get a few in this one, a few in that one. So yeah, all of these are being used and it's all being distributed pretty evenly. So yeah, uh, this method that I decided to go with is well, is actually uh, pretty pretty good here. So yeah, we can see that we are collecting quite a lot at a time as they come back after they're being processed. So uh, I'm very happy with the way this is set up. So now that we have all this silicon dioxide, a little bit in excess now, um, I did set up a drawer over here to store those as well. And we are continuing to collect our oxygen and hydrogen over here. Now that we have the ability to craft that automatically, we need to set up a way to take the uh, silicon dioxide and we need to craft lead oxide. I guess that's another thing that we need to do. So that needs to be in a combiner. So oxygen and lead is going to make one of those. In fact, let's actually go upstairs real quick and make that recipe since we have not made that yet. So we want lead oxide we want this to be a thing okay and then we also want this to be a thing right so back down here i set up a combiner over here we have a pattern provider and we are going to put in this one and this one so i don't know if we have to set this up to a to don't push crafting ingredients if there already contains one Otherwise, if we don't do that, I feel like if we say make reactor glass, uh, it's going to push in the oxygen and lead, and then we're going to have like silicon dioxide and lead oxide all pushed in there all at the same time, and bad things are going to happen. Anyway, so we want blocking mode turned on. Let's see if we can make reactor glass this way. I have not tested this. I assume this is going to work, but maybe it won't. What's going on here? Oh yeah, okay, so looks like we are good. So I see that it does have these things here and you can lock the recipe, but it's not locked right now. I am curious if we tell it to make more than one reactor glass, let's say let's make 10. How does this work? So we already have lead oxide apparently. I don't know where we got the lead oxide from, but I don't think I crafted that up either. Well, apparently we have a whole lot of that in the system. Let's take a look. Lead oxide. We have five more of those. Hmm. Okay, we'll try that again. So I want reactor glass. Oh, it's still crafting them. Uh, let's say make 20 of those. Okay, so now it says we're out of lead. So that's a problem. We need a way to tell the system how to create lead. And creating lead should be easily solved just by putting a recipe in this one right here with our silicon dioxide from glass with lead from lead ingots, right? So one lead ingot equals 16 lead. So if we try that recipe again, whoop, and I tell it to craft up reactor glass, I think I was trying to make 20 before, it's happy with this. So let's start that up and let's see how this all goes. We should have lead over here and one of these being turned into stuff and things over here. So yes, we are still crafting up with the existing lead oxide because I don't believe we have crafted any. Okay, so here we go. Oxygen and lead gets turned in there and then it's making these. Awesome. Okay, so now it's just going back and forth, back and forth. Well, it's making this stuff a little slow. It might be another situation where we want to have multiple of these combiners set up. But as you can see, this seems to be working. 
All right, guys, so we need a total of 36 reactor glass in order to make ourselves the fission chamber. Well, I guess the fission multi-block. That's what we need. So I told the system to craft up the rest of these. So we have 30. We have 31 here. So we need five more in total, right? And they're queued up and we have everything, but it is not doing anything, right? Crafting one scheduled for nothing's happening. So what it seems like is this is only working automated like this if I right click on it. You can see it's starting to craft now. And there we go. So now it's crafting lead oxide, crafting one, scheduled three, but nothing's happening until I click on this thing. And then it starts to craft. And then we come in here, it finishes that one, and then it's crafting this one, three remaining. So that's really odd. Uh, I feel like I'm going to have to make this, if we're going to do an automated thing, I'm going to have to make this so each recipe has its own dedicated machine, is what this is feeling like, because it can switch back and forth just fine, only if I'm in the interface watching it do it, <laughs> because otherwise it's just going to sit there and like, I don't know how to do anything. Yeah, that's super, super odd. Yep. Um, okay, well, either way, we have the 36 reactor glass about to be made now, so, uh, that's gonna be a problem for the future when we have to craft a whole bunch of these things, I suppose. <laughs> but yeah, that's one of those weird, really odd things I've never seen before. I assume it has something to do with it switching this recipe automatically, but yeah, the, the lock isn't on, so, uh, yeah, I have no idea. Anyway, so now that we have the ability to uh, make that gl make that glass, we need this book here. Now that we have the ability to make that glass, I can go ahead and get the rest of this stuff. So we need 62 reactor casing. Oh, you know what? I never put that recipe in the applied energistic system. That's sitting in my inventory. So let's go put it in there and see if we can craft that up. Find a home for that. We'll just put that right there. So reactor casing, it was 62 of those. And we need osmium and platinum. I think we do have osmium, but it's a different type. This is looking for the chemlib stuff. Platinum, however. No, we should have enough, I believe, with the platinum ore and the raw platinum. I just need to smelt it down. Right, so uh, I'm trying to fix that recipe that we needed the osmium and the platinum, and I thought that, you know, because we were using the wrong ingredients that we just had to switch to the ones that we had. That's not actually the case. So if we took a look, take a look at reactor casing, we go back into here. Yeah, so this is using the chemlib osmium, the chemlib platinum. Well, how do you get this osmium? This is not or a dictionary. You can't just substitute it with the mechanism version. So in order to get that, you need these nuggets or the block, the nuggets you get from the ingots. So that's not helpful. Uh, the block, however, you can stone cut the mechanism or I guess the all the ores block, right? And then that'll convert it into this. It doesn't look like there is an easier conversion. Maybe there's like an ore dictionary converter or something that would work that just the same, but stone cutting seems to be the method and potentially we can do create block cutting to automate this process depending on how much we need. But anyway, that's how we are going to do that. Um, so I saw here platinum and ore. I was trying to figure out the best way to do stuff with this so we could get more platinum out of it. If we look at the uses on that, if we crush it with the ore hammer, we get one. I feel like we're getting more if I mined it just with a pickaxe, maybe with fortune it's affected by that. But I was going through this list here of all the different things that we could do, and I came across the mechanical squeezer. So this will give you three raw platinum guaranteed and a 50% chance of two more and a 50% chance of two more still. So you can get a total of seven out of this thing, and it uh crafts every two seconds um so yeah i was kind of going down the path how do we get the mechanical squeezer so in order to do that we need these energy batteries and in order to get the energy batteries we need blocks of crystallized mineral and then we need the mineral chunk and i do believe that is obtained through uh well we can do it through bees but yeah anyway i think you can get it from yeah the mineral log and this mineral resin 
And I think the, there is a way to get it. Yeah, the regular squeezer can get that mineral resin for you. But either way, we have to have the mineral tree. So <laughs> let's, let's divert our plan here for just a moment. Mineral sapling. This is what we need to get the tree, right? So you can do that through mineral essence, which comes from a tier two seed. But I think you have to have the mineral stuff to begin with in order to do this. Uh, the other method is we can sift leaves. Yeah, so sifting leaves on the netherite mesh, which we have, it can be any Minecraft colon leaves, gives us a 20% chance at mineral sapling. So that seems like what we want to do. Also, rubber wood. Uh, I think that might be how we got the rubber to begin with. I don't remember now. But either, either way, we'll throw these leaves in here. We got a stack of them. And yeah, that should sift. And I think they'll just hang out here. Or actually, do we have an overflow chest? I can't remember how this is all set up. I don't see an overflow chest. So maybe they just hang out in this. Or did I just delete them? <laughs> uh, you know what? Nope, nope. I remember now. All that stuff goes into applied energistic. So if we have mineral. Hmm. Does not look like we have mineral in here. Do we have rubber sampling? We have 75 of those. Uh, leaves. I guess I'll try this again. Maybe we get really unlucky. We'll just try again. Maybe we'll get mineral this time. It did say it's a 20% chance, so... Yeah, it's possible that we got unlucky. And still nothing. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try this again. Although these are azalea leaves. I don't know. Okay, spreading them out doesn't do anything for us. <laughs> I was kind of hoping that might give us a different result here. Aha! Now we got mineral. All right. Very good. Very good. So, yes, we can grow this. There it is. Yep. And then we just need to chop it down and try and get more saplings out of this. What is this thing? Enriched mineral log. Okay. Vein mine. All these things don't want to vein mine for some reason. Oh, there's even more log up here. All right, are we getting saplings? Yes, we're getting plenty of saplings. We're getting crystallized mineral chuck and mineral berries. Awesome. I'm just going to keep at this and try and get a whole bunch of these. Okay, so I spent a bunch of time chopping down trees, about 450 mineral logs worth. Uh, we have eight of these crystallized mineral chunks left over after we crafted our mechanical squeezer. Let's see how this thing performs. So if I put in platinum ore here, squeeze, look at that, we got three. Now we got seven more, only three that time. Yeah, so this seems like this is a pretty good way to collect a lot of uh, a lot of our raw platinum here. So the next thing that I'm going to do is take this raw platinum and throw it through our smeltery, which seems a little weird that we're still using the smeltery at this point, but it is an easy way for us to double ore, and the blocks just get automatically formed and put into our system. So. Yep, that's what I've been doing, just throwing the raw platinum into our smeltery, or I guess any of our stuff that we smelt, into our smeltery, and that just gets automatically converted into blocks that we can convert into ingots. So taking all that platinum and running it through our mechanical squeezer here, we ended up with five stacks of the platinum or plus 10. So yeah, that was 73 blocks plus three ingots, I believe is what that all came out to. Uh, so I made our small tree a little bit bigger to handle <laughs> the extra stuff that we had. So this holds almost a thousand ingots now, which is pretty good. Um, but yeah, we got that all smelted down and we should be good to go on the whole platinum situation going forward. But I was just taking a look and yeah, the video is getting a little long. We don't have the both types of metals converted into the right thing. So we'll have to take a look at that fission reactor next time. Anyway. That's going to do it for this episode of All the Mods 7 to the Sky. Uh, hit the like button if you liked it. We'll see you next time. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.